Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I'm going to show you how to build the Holy Grail of Adders, the Carry Cancel Adder. This is an example of what a Carry Cancel Adder looks like, and this particular design might not be the absolute perfect ultimate Carry Cancel Adder design, but it's a pretty good one. And just the fact that it's using Carry Cancel Edition is really what makes it amazing. So here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to talk a little bit about how the whole carry canceling business works because it's different than most adders you're probably used to if you've, well, if you've never seen it before. And then I'm going to show you how to build the rest of the adder around it. So let's go ahead and let's get started. To understand how the carry logic works in carry cancel adders, I'd like to take a moment and look at the more traditional ripple carry adder. So here it is with the XOR gate leading into the outer XOR gate and the carry line in the middle. The way the carry works, it follows a very specific pattern. If I put on both inputs, which will generate a carry signal, then the carry will continue forward forever. And forward, not backwards. No, it's not going to the carry end. It'll continue only forwards forever. Unless one of the future adders has an input at zero. If I put this adder's input at zero, that cancels the carry, hence the name, and then you get zero. But any other input whether it's what I just had, both inputs are on, or only one input is on, any other input, it will just keep on going forever. And this is the basic way, or the basic idea, behind carry cancel apps. Any carries will continue forwards and not backwards forever, unless one of the half adders has both inputs at zero in which case it cancels the carry. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And if not, it'll probably make a little bit more sense once we get into building it. So let's go ahead and set up a basic little circuit that implements that bit of logic. Before we get too far into the video, I think it's worth mentioning that this will be a lot easier if you have World Edit installed. You can still do it without World Edit. It's just World Edit makes things a lot easier. So, the first part of our carry logic is we need a way to have a signal that will go forward indefinitely, but not backwards. The easiest way to do that is with a slab tower, like I have right here. If I power a certain point on the slab tower, because redstone does not go down half slabs, it will go up the tower indefinitely, but not down. It goes forwards, but not backwards. So this is a simple, elegant way to do the first part of the logic. And in case you're wondering, the reason I went ahead and built this is just to save a bit of time, and I don't think it's particularly mind-bending to build this. So feel free to pause the video for a moment if you need to build this and catch up. So. The second part of the carry logic. If we have a cancel signal, we need to somehow say this signal doesn't go forward anymore. And in a slab tower like this, there's no easy way to say cut the signal like this, like you might do an instant carry. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to do this with comparators. What we're going to do is we're going to have a comparator in subtract mode. And under normal conditions, if I just have a couple comparators in subtract mode, it'll just send the signal straight through. So if I, for example, power here, signal goes up indefinitely, goes through the comparator, just like there's nothing there. This is good. This is what we want when there aren't any canceling signals. The trick is we need a way to cancel. And the way we do this is by powering the subtract input. 
because if I subtract a full power signal from whatever is coming into the comparator, it gets zero. So you can cancel the signal like this. This isn't complete just yet, though. I mean, in principle, this does provide a way to cause the signal to stop. But as is, this is only blocking one specific signal. It's not blocking it from propagating indefinitely. So what we need is we need another slab tower. This will cause our cancel signal to go forward indefinitely, but not backwards. So if I cancel, say, right here, it will cancel this bit and all future bits, but not the ones before it. So just like that, we have a nice, reasonably elegant way of doing the carry logic. I can just, I can even go ahead and fill this out if I wanted to. I'm going to use world edit in a moment, so I'm not going to go too crazy here. But uh, yeah, this is this is the basic logic behind a carry cancel adder. I can power wherever I want. Signal goes forward, not backwards. I can cancel wherever I want. Cancel goes forward, not backwards and cancels the signal. There you go. So, I went ahead and stacked our bit of carry cancel logic off screen, and now this is basically our carry system. We're pretty much done with it. In fact, we're most of the way done with the adder. This bit is going to be the carry for all the uh, final XORs. So all we need to complete an adder is we need the first XOR, and the final XOR, and we need to power the cancel line when both inputs are off. So I'm going to start by doing the cancel line, because that's probably the most different if you're new to carry cancel adders. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a repeater here so I can power the cancel line from this direction without interfering with the, the carry line, and I'm going to put a torch here. And all I have to do now is I have to... I'm going to do a little bit of wiring this way. And... Pretty much, I'm going to have both inputs power this wire right here. So, input 1, input 2. If both of these are off, then the torch will be off. And therefore, the cancel line will be powered. If either of them are on, the torch will turn off so the cancel line will no longer be powered. Just like that, we have the cancel set up and working. It really is that simple. So, to finish off our adder, all we need are XORs. The XORs of the two inputs at the beginning, and the XOR of the carry, and the first XOR at the end. So. I'm going to use a comparator XOR here. The way this works, if you've never seen it before, is through differences in signal strength. If I power one, but not both, there's a difference in signal strength between these two, well, subtractor comparators, and, well, you get a one. If they're both on, or if they're both off, there's no difference, so you get a zero. So. It's an XOR. Simple as that. So now we have our XOR. The other thing we need is we need to generate a carry if both inputs are on. There's actually a little bit of a trick we can do for this. So I'm going to use our XOR as our generate. Normally you wouldn't do this, but in this case we can use this as an AND, and I'll show you why in a moment. So first off, I'm going to change this block to a half slab for stacking purposes. And I'm going to go up one, and I'm going to power it, just like this. So, now this actually will function as an AND. So let's pretend this zero input doesn't exist for a moment. If one input is on, it's off. If the other input is on, it's off. If both inputs are on, it's on. The only time this doesn't act like an AND is when both inputs are off. Here's the thing. If both inputs are off, the cancel is on. 
so this will still be zero. That's why we can use the XOR as the input here. So it's a nice little trick you can do. Only really works with carry cancel adders, but yeah, very cool. So now we have our first half adder. We just need to basically XOR this XOR output right here with the carry, and that is our final added result. So to do this, I'm going to do a little bit of creative busing. I'm going to move the XOR up one here, then send it through a repeater here, through a block, and right here. This way, the XOR much closer to the carry, much closer to XOR. Another thing you have to be careful of here, all our carry logic is going into this bit right here. That means we do not want to XOR with this carry. We want to XOR with the carry of the previous bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit more interesting busing. I'm going to bus it down a bit. So now they're on the same level. And if this XOR is on and the carry is off, then I want an output. I mean, that's one of the valid states of XOR. So I'm going to bust this up here so that I can go by without interfering with anything. And I'm going to have it go into a torch. And that's going to power this wire, which is going to be blocked off from the top. There's going to be another torch right here. This implements that very logic. If the XOR is on, and the carry is off, then it's just going through a double inversion. It's going to go through this torch, then this torch. But if the carry is on, I think I'm going to have to be slightly creative to power this, but that's okay. If the carry is on, then this torch will always be powered. So this will always be off. So that's the first part of our XOR. We still need an output if, for instance, the carry is on and the XOR is off. So I'm going to have a block here, and I'm going to send it through a comparator. Now, if the carry is on, then this is on. But if the XOR is on, I need a way to make the zero. Well, we already did that same sort of logic over here in the cancel wire. So I'm going to set add a subtract and I'm going to power, full power, right here. So this will be... So if the carry is on, and the XOR is on, then this is zero. If the carry is on, and XOR is off, it's one. So all we have to do is or these two inputs together, and what do you know? We have an XOR gate, and the final output of... well, of our adder. Just like that. And that's how you build one bit of a carry cancel adder. So I'm going to go ahead and stack this. I'm going to do a little bit of testing off screen because I'm pretty confident there's going to be a few odd bits and bytes that are going to make stacking this a little weird. So one moment. OK, as predicted, world edit was a little bit tricky. So here's what you have to do to stack this. Go right here. This blocks right on par, or it's on the same vertical level as all the blocks at the top. I'm going to set this to position 1. Now I'm going to go over here to this block. It's one block under this wire, C. And I'm going to go set this as position 2. Now I'm going to go two blocks down here, and I'm going to copy here. So I'm going to copy. Now I can go down two blocks and paste dash A. That way, air blocks won't overwrite anything. So cool. If all went according to plan, I should be able to put in one number. There, it's one. And another. It adds and carries. I can add another. And it should power the carry out up there. If I take one away, it should go three. Carry out is off. So cool. This is working. At this point, we can just stack this 
as many times as we need. It's going to go down to paste three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's actually kind of cool because the final bit is right on level with the ground. So the, the lamp's in the ground, and you know, I kind of like that aesthetic. It was unintentional, but I like it. Now we can add my fan favorite. We can add five. There's five. And three. And. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Confused myself for a moment there. But yeah, five plus three is eight. So there you go. This is a carry cans ladder. It works. It's reasonably small. It's reasonably fast. And this does. This particular design is relatively dynamic. You can make. ALUs and stuff out of this relatively easily. So there you go. And for the record, this is not an entirely original design. This design, I think, was originally designed by that guy right there, Koyarno, but I could be wrong. I don't actually know for sure who the original author is. But yeah, I like it very much. And there you go. Okay, so for the final part of this tutorial, I have moved my adder up a few blocks and turned on all of the inputs on one side. The reason for this is I'm going to show you how to make a carry-in. Now, for the carry-in, we don't have to worry about canceling the carry, so we can just simply get rid of that. What we really want is to power this line right here. But doing that alone isn't enough. Sure, it turns off all the outputs, but it doesn't quite reach the carryout right here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this a bit. I'm going to change this particular... Well, I guess I can leave that as a comparator. It doesn't really matter. But the main thing I'm going to do I'm going to change this block right here, the one I'm pointing to, into snow. In this way, I can break some random piece of block and destroy the adder. Good job. <laughs> no. This way, what I can do is I can break this block, I can add a torch, and that powers both this carry, and it sends power to the carry tower a little bit higher up. And that will just barely reach the carry out up here. I can go ahead and add a block there so the carry out has a little bit of, well, you know, a little bit more visible. And there you go. That is the basic way of adding a carry out. The only thing is this is inverted carry out, so you might want to make a note of that. Carry in. Excuse me. There you go. So, that is how to build a simple carry cancel ladder. This is a really cool design, in my opinion. This one. It allows you to do a whole bunch of really awesome things. It's relatively compact. It's relatively easy to turn into an ALU or a sequential circuit. This adder is awesome. So, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And maybe next time, you just might find out how you can do some more interesting things with this. Start really seeing the true power of carry cancel ladders. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you next